Our goal for the paperweights lesson is to define basic size, identify basic paper sizes for sample paper types, define basis weight, and identify basis weights of four example papers, and then to explain the connection between basic sizes and basis weight in terms of calculating the weight of paper. We will use that information to practice calculating paper weight, and then we will practice calculating the number of sheets needed to complete a print job so that we can fully calculate the weight of paper based on client specifications. So let's start out by answering the question, what is basic size? The basic size of paper refers to the traditional size a particular type of paper is manufactured in. For example, cover papers have a different basic size than writing papers, which are papers used for stationery. All calculations in regard to a specific type of paper, like bond, writing, cover, book, text, opaque, offset, etc., are made based on the basic size of that particular type of paper. Some important things to know about basic sizes. First, paper can be purchased in many different sizes. You do not have to purchase paper in its basic size. Basic sizes vary from one paper type to another, and the basic size of the specific type of paper that you're using will never change. When we talk about paper, there are many different types of paper. Commercial printing papers are manufactured at a mill. Some mills are sappy paper, verso paper, international paper, etc. And then they're sold through a paper company. And in Salt Lake, we might use Spicer's paper or Verative paper. There's also paper companies called Lindenmeyer Monroe or Unisource and more. And then they are distributed directly to the printing company that will print on that paper. And some examples locally are Sun Litho, car printing, PZ printing, and more. What you need to know about paper for this class is that paper comes in many sizes and colors. The paper is described by weight, not by thickness, which is not what people usually think. And that the higher weight, uh, the higher paper weight is usually thicker, but it doesn't have to be. Paper is either coated or uncoated. Coated papers come with a coating on the surface and they're described as a gloss paper, a satin paper, a dull paper, etc. Uncoated papers are usually described by the texture of the surface, so there's no coating on it, but you get to have a porous textured surface, and the paper could be smooth, linen, laid, vellum, wove. There's lots of different types of surface texture available for uncoated papers. Lighter papers are classified as text or book weight papers, and in general, we say that these are the papers that go on the inside of a book. And then heavier papers are classified as cover weight papers or the paper that would go on the outside of a book. The three categories of paper that we will use for this class, and we're using these categories because the majority of paper that you use in the commercial printing industry falls in one of these three categories. So the three categories we're going to use are bond and writing, which are actually two different categories, but we're going to put them together. And essentially, these are uncoated papers that are used for stationary type products like letterheads, envelopes, and things like that. The second category is cover paper, which is heavier weight papers that are used for the outside of a book. And then our third category is actually four different types of paper, and that's text, book, offset, and opaque. And essentially, these are all categories of paper that would be lighter weight papers used for the inside of a book. You may use the following links to learn more about paper. These are links to paper mills. They manufacture the paper that's then sold to a paper company, and then the paper company sells it directly to the printers who are going to print on it. A fun fact about paper is that paper manufacturers love to give out free samples. You can get free samples of paper that you would like to consider using for a design job just by asking. There's usually a digital request feature on their website, some paper mills even have free educational swag, as I call it. Uh, Verso Paper, which is formerly known as New Page Paper, created a 15 plus ed book series um, of information relating to the commercial printing industry. And Sappy Fine Papers, which is one of the links above, produces what's called the Sappy Standards Books. If you go to any of these websites, you can learn more about paper. You don't have to know anything in addition to what I'm telling you about paper, but if it interests you, go ahead and visit 
those sites for more information. In order to calculate the weight of paper, we have to understand what a basic size is and how it relates to the weight of paper. So the basic size of paper is set in stone. Every type of paper has its own basic size and that basic size is, is what is used to do all the mathematical calculations for the paper, including the calculations for the paper weight. The easiest way to know what the basic size of a particular stock, which is another word for paper, is, is to just look on a chart. So the chart doesn't change. The chart that you see on the right hand side I pulled off of the internet and it shows some but not even all of the different types of paper that you could use in the commercial printing industry. And so what we'll do is we'll use this chart to figure out what the basic size is or the ideal paper size or ideal manufacturer size is for the three classifications of paper that we're going to use in this class. And as a reminder, the categories we will use are one, bond and writing, which are actually two different categories. So if you look on the list, you should be able to find bond and writing separately, cover. And then our third category is text, book, offset, and opaque, which again are four different categories that you'll see on that blue list. I would like you to take a minute to see if you can find all three of those categories on the list and to write down what the basic size is, which is the ideal size that paper should be manufactured in. You may want to pause the video if you're still looking. If not, I'm going to move forward and show you the answer. So the, the basic sizes of the paper that we are going to use, and I've broken them out here individually so you can see, but we're going to group them together because as you can see, bond is 17 inches by 22 inches, writing is 17 by 22. So we're going to call that one category, bond and writing. Cover has an ideal manufacture size of 20 by 26. And all of those um, papers that go on the inside of a book, the text, the book, the offset, and the opaque, the ideal manufacture size for that is 25 inches by 38 inches. You should either take a screenshot or you should write down the, the second list here, the three categories and their basic sizes, because we're going to need to plug those sizes into a formula when we calculate the weight of paper. The reason that there is an ideal manufacture size for different types of paper has to do what the paper is used for. And I think the easiest way to illustrate this is to look at the bond and writing paper. Bond and writing is used to do things like letterheads and letterheads are eight and a half by 11. And in general, a letterhead doesn't have a bleed, meaning that the ink doesn't flow all the way to the edge of the paper. You stick a letterhead in a typewriter or in a printer and you print a letter on it that you're gonna to send to someone else. So if we take a look at the 17 inch by 22 inch sheet of paper, if we cut it in half twice, so if we cut the 22 inch length of the paper in half, we get 11 inches. And if we cut the 17 inch length of the paper or height of the paper in half, we get eight and a half. And so if we were gonna make letterheads that, that are exactly eight and a half by 11, we can literally just cut this in half and in half and we get four exact size eight and a half by 11s. When we make um, the basic size, we have to take into consideration what the paper is being used for. And because letterheads are exactly eight and a half by 11, it's perfectly fine to slice that in half twice. But if we look at the 25 by 38 inch sheet, you can see I've kind of made it light here. In the printing industry, when we print the inside of a book, we print in what are called signatures. And each signature is 16 pages. We have eight pages on the front of the sheet of paper. And if we flip it over, there are eight pages on the back. And if you look closely here, you can count that these little dash marks are breaking up the area into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections representing eight pages. If I flip the sheet over, I could have eight more. If I did the math for an eight and a half by 11 inch um, finished book size, I would have eight and a half times four and 11 times two, which would give me 22 by 34 inches if I did that math in my head. And so 22 inches is not 25 inches and 34 inches is not 38 inches. 
The reason that we need to have a bigger sheet of paper when we print a signature for a book is oftentimes the ink goes over the edge of the paper, over the outside edge of the eight and a half by 11 book size. So we need extra to be able to print what's called a bleed. We also sometimes need to print what's called a lip. After a signature is folded, you need to have extra paper so that the machine that's assembling the book can grab onto the book. And essentially, we just need extra paper to account for things that are involved in the process to make that book. And so in, in theory, we only need a sheet that is 22 by 34 inches. But to account for all the extras, we print on sheets that are 25 by 38 inches. So we have a little bit of a buffer that we can trim off when we're making our book. That is the same reason that cover weight paper has a basic size of 20 by 26. However, you will notice that a cover sheet of paper is half, essentially it's half the size. It's much smaller than the inside of a book. And the reason is because we usually print lots of pages on the inside of a book. You might have 200 pages inside your book, but we only have one cover per book. So we're never printing that many sheets of the cover compared to the inside. And so we don't want to manufacture like if we were to make the cover sheet as big as the textbook offset and opaque, the comparison would be a 26 by 40 inch sheet of paper. But because we don't print as many covers, we don't want to run that big of a sheet. We'd rather run less sheets um, with less covers on them um, because it's more economical in the long run for the printing process. And then one last thing, the only reason that cover weight is not 19 by 25, which is half of the size of the inside of a book pages, is because a cover often has a spine, which means the length across the flat size of the cover. Um, you can see this is the, the left panel on the cover, this is the spine, and this is the right panel. Um, the length that the cover is can expand based on the thickness of the book, and so we need slightly bigger sheets to account for the spine. Now that we have somewhat of an understanding of basic sizes, we need to talk about basic size and basis weight. When we talk about paper, we often describe it as 20 pound bond. That's your generic copy paper that you would use in a printer at work or in a copy machine. Or another example is 80 pound cover. The weight or the basis weight of the paper, um, which in these examples was the 20 pound and the 80 pound description, is calculated using the basic size of paper. The basis weight is defined as 500 sheets of paper in its basic size. So when you are thinking about the basis weight of paper, if somebody tells you that paper is 20 pound bond, they're not saying that the paper weighs 20 pounds. What they're saying is that 500 sheets of that paper in its basic size weighs 20 pounds. So let's use that as an example. If we're talking about 20 pound bond paper, we can go back and look at our chart. Bond and writing, or bond in this case, has a basic size of 17 inches by 22 inches. So when we say that the basis weight of it is 20 pounds, what we're saying is that 500 sheets of the basic size, in this case bond's basic size, is 17 inches by 22, um, will weigh 20 pounds. If the basis weight is 20 pounds. If we had 28 pound bond, what we would be saying is that 500 sheets of 17 by 22, 28 pound bond weighs 28 pounds. So I was able to calculate this because the basic size of bond paper is 17 by 22. And I pulled that information from the chart on the previous slide. And the basis weight in the example is listed as 20 pounds. If we were talking about 17 pound bond, the same would apply. 500 sheets of 17 by 22 inch paper would weigh 17 pounds if we were talking about 17 pound bond. If we we're talking about 32 pound bond, it would weigh 32 pounds. Um, before I move forward, I would like to note that when we talk about pounds in the printing industry, we almost always write it as the pound sign, the little hashtag symbol. And so if you see me write LB, LBS, or even that hashtag pound sign, please make sure that you're aware that that means 
pounds of paper. As we have already established, the weight, the basis weight of paper is the weight of 500 sheets of paper in its basic size. Some people use the basis weight of paper to help identify the thickness of the paper, and that is one common misconception. So please do not get the basis weight confused with paper thickness. Caliper is the measured thickness of paper, and it's measured using a micrometer. And in most circumstances, knowing the basis weight of a stock can help users identify a thicker or a thinner stock, but it doesn't always work that way. For example, 80 pound Hanogar Hanoart gloss coated cover is going to be thinner than 100 pound Hanoart gloss coated cover. And the only reason that I know this is because we're comparing apples to apples. Um, as long as we're comparing the same exact paper, Hanoart gloss coated cover, I can make the logical assumption that an 80 pound paper weighs less and is thinner than a hundred pound paper. You cannot assume that, um, that you cannot make that same assumption if you're not comparing apples to apples. So I cannot assume that 80 pound Hanawart gloss coated cover is thinner than 100 pound Husky uncoated cover. I'm not comparing apples to apples. Instead, I would have to measure the thickness of each uh, sheet using a micrometer, which looks like this um, option up here in the top right hand corner. And that would tell me the thickness of the paper. And then once I know the thickness, I can compare those values to determine which paper is thicker or thinner. Basis weights are posted in many different locations in many different ways. Here are just a few places you may find basis weights when you're looking at packages or cartons of paper. Try to identify which numbers on the packaging are the basis weights for that particular stock. Remember, basis weight is described in pounds, so you're looking for a value that's marked with the pound sign or LBS. Um, if these indicators are not included, the manufacturer may have labeled it the may labeled it as the weight, or they may have said this is the basis. But we know from from this lesson that basis means basis weight. So take a minute and see if you can find the basis weight on this package of Nina paper environment writing stock or paper. The basis weight is listed as 24, and then there's some grams, that's um, the metric system, but underneath it says basis. So in this example, we can determine that this is 24 pound Nina environment writing paper. And if you look closely, you can actually see a lot more about the paper on the package. So you can see the color is called tortilla, and the size is eight and a half by 11. Um, there's 500 sheets in this package, etc. What we know by understanding that this is 24 pound Nina environment writing paper is that 500 sheets of 17 by 22 inch paper or stock will weigh 24 pounds. And we know that because it's Nina writing paper. And if we go back to our chart, the basic size of writing paper is 17 by 22. So we know that 500 sheets of this particular paper, if it was 17 by 22, would weigh 24 pounds. The eight and a half by 11 inch package of paper in the example that you're actually looking at is called a ream of paper because it has 500 sheets. I haven't taught you how to figure it out yet, but can you think about how you would figure out how much that package of paper weighs if we know that 500 sheets of 17 inch by 22 inch version of this paper weighs 24 pounds. If you would like to give that a try, pause the video. If you want to walk through the solution with me, don't pause and we'll keep moving on. So in this case, this ream of paper weighs six pounds. And I know that because I know that a 17 by 22 inch sheet of paper, if I had 500 of them, would weigh 24 pounds. And as we previously established, if I cut this paper in half twice, I can make four eight and a half by 11s. So this is 500 sheets of eight and a half by 11, which is one fourth of the overall basic size. So if the size that I'm purchasing is one fourth of the basic size, it's also one fourth of the basis weight. So if you take 24 and divide it, um, 24 and divide it by four, 
you get six pounds. This package of paper, this ream, a ream is 500 sheets, this 500 sheet package of paper, if you put it on a scale, would weigh six pounds. Okay, let's try it again. So what is the basis weight of this paper? This is Torch Glow Multipurpose 2050, which is just the type of paper. Um, it's eight and a half by 11 if we look at it, and the color is Desert Stand. Can you find the basis weight of the paper before I press next on my slide? This torch glow is 20 pound, or it's 20 pound torch glow, glow multi-purpose bond paper. I'm telling you it's bond because I know that it's bond. Um, it's not the best example because it's not labeled for someone that doesn't understand how the weight of paper is calculated. Essentially, any paperweights that are 32 pounds or less have to be bond or writing papers. And so that's how I narrowed it down to bond. Okay, so now that we know that this is 20 pound bond, we also can deduce that 500 sheets of 17 by 22 inch sheets of this paper would weigh 20 pounds. This is a box of 5,000 sheets of paper. Can you figure out how much it weighs, the entire box? If you'd like to give it a try, pause the video. If not, um, just hang on and we'll go through the answer together. So in this case, we have 500 sheets of eight and a half by 11, 20 pound bond. Um, that's a typo, that should say 5,000. Um, we have 5,000 sheets of eight and a half by 11, 20 pound bond. It weighs 50 pounds and we calculate it using the same idea as the previous paper. So we're purchasing eight and a half by 11. So we're purchasing one fourth of the overall basic size of paper. So we can take the 20 pound bond and divide it by four. And we can say that 500 sheets of 20 pound bond weighs five pounds. But we don't have 500 sheets, we have 5,000. We have 10 times that. So we can take the five pounds per ream per 500 sheets and then multiply that times 10. And that tells us that this big box of paper will weigh 50 pounds. Let's try it again. What is the basis weight of the paper that you're seeing here? This is a close up of a package of paper. It is Nina paper is the manufacturer and the type of paper is called conservation cover. In this case, this is 80 pound, it says 80 basis, Nina conservation cover paper. That means to us that 500 sheets of 20 by 26 inch paper will weigh 80 pounds. And I know that because if we go back to our chart, the basic size of cover is 20 by 26 inches. So the basic size is used to determine the basis weight and the basis weight is defined as 500 sheets of paper in its basic size. So let's go back to that example. And so if I know that the basis weight is 80, I know that if I had 500 sheets and they were 20 by 26 inches, they would weigh a total of 80 pounds um, because the basic size for cover is 20 by 26. However, I'm not purchasing 20 by 26 inch sheets. The package is actually eight and a half by 11 and it only has 250 sheets, not 500. So knowing that this is 250 sheets of paper, can you still figure out how much it weighs? If you'd like to give it a try, pause the video. If not, wait, and we'll go through the answer on the next slide. So in this case, it's almost a trick question because with the, with the previous examples, Eight and a half by 11 was a really quick division of the overall basic size. It was one fourth and it was even division. But when we take a look at the, the basic size of cover weight paper, the 20 inch by 26, it doesn't divide nicely. If I am purchasing eight and a half by 11, I'm not purchasing one fourth of that size. I, I don't know what that percentage is. Is it 20% of the size of the basic size? Is it 18%? Is it 70%? It makes it almost impossible to calculate that weight 
on my own in my head. I do know that if I was able to calculate the weight of 500 sheets of 8.5 by 11, I could deduce that whatever that value is will be half for this package because the package is half of 500. This is where the paperweight formula comes into play. This entire lesson has led up to this formula that we're going to use. So we're going to use a paperweights formula to calculate the value or the amount of weight of paper that you're purchasing. And essentially, we are going to do what we did for the first two examples and ask ourselves, well, how big is the paper that we're purchasing compared to that ideal basic size? And then we have to ask ourselves, well, how much paper are we purchasing? And is it in even 500 increments? And then we'll also ask ourselves, what is the basis weight of the paper? In order to do that, you're going to need specific information every time we do a, a paperweights problem. So I would like you to make sure that you know the answers to these four questions every single time you have to calculate the weight of paper. And those questions are, one, how many sheets of paper are you purchasing? And um, what size is that paper? And it's important that you identify the, the size you are purchasing not the size that you're running through your press or the item size that you're producing. So if you're producing three inch by eight inch bookmarks, but you are purchasing 19 by 25 inch sheets of paper, your paperweight formula is based on the size of paper you are purchasing, that 19 by 25. Third, you also need to know what the basic size of the type of paper you're purchasing is and what the basis weight of the paper you are purchasing is. If you don't have the answer to these four questions, you cannot calculate the weight of the paper that you were purchasing. So on the bottom half of the slide, you can see the formula that we will use to calculate the weight of paper. And essentially there are three columns that we will calculate. The first column calculates how big your size of paper is compared to the ideal basic size of the paper. So you'll divide the size you are purchasing by the basic size of the paper. The second column, we will take the total number of sheets that we are purchasing and divide it by 500. 500 is the only value in the entire formula that will never change. And then the third column, you will multiply it times the basis weight. And so for the first column, you're trying to see how big is my paper compared to the ideal basic size of paper. The second column, you're seeing how many stacks of 500 paper do I have? And the third column is the basis weight of the paper. Some important things to note, the first column calculates how big or small your sheet is. The second calculates how many stacks of 500 you have. And as a reminder, you should not round any values in the formula until you get to the very end. Um, and then once you get to the very end and you have your total weight of your paper, you can round the total uh, weight of paper to two decimals. The reason that you can round the, the weight of the paper to two decimals as opposed to whole pounds is because when you buy a whole sheet of paper, that paper doesn't have to weigh an even pound. It may weigh half a pound. And so it is typical that the weight of the paper that you calculate will not be an even number. Let's work through a problem together to calculate the weight of paper. So the example we'll use is how much does 117,000 sheets of 24 inch by 36 inch 80 pound gloss coated cover weigh? First, we need to find the answers to those four questions before we can plug those values into our formula. So I would like you to take a minute and see if you have the ability to, to see what the answers are to these four questions. Pause the video and when you are ready, press play and we will move forward together. So the four questions are, how many sheets of paper do you need? And in this example, you are told you need 117,000 sheets of paper. What is the size paper you are purchasing? 24 inch by 36 inch paper. What is the basic size of paper? You have to be able to recognize that this is 80 pound gloss coated cover. 80 pounds is question four, the basis weight of the paper. The type of paper is gloss coated cover. So if you didn't write it down, you need to go all the way back to the chart that we wrote and identify that cover weight 
has a basic size of 20 by 26 inches. Once we have that information, we can plug it into our formula, which you see on this slide here, and we can slowly condense or um, simplify the answer. So the first column, your paper size is 24 inches by 36 inches, and the basic paper size is 20 inches by 26 inches. When you multiply these together, 24 times 36 is 864 inches squared or square inches and 20 times 26 is 520. When you divide 864 inches squared by 520 inches squared, the inches squared cancel each other out and they drop out of the answer. So 864 divided by 520 comes out to 1.6615384153, a really long decimal. Leave that there for a second. The second column, we're gonna take the total number of sheets that we're purchasing in this example, it's 117,000 sheets, and divide that by 500. 117,000 divided by 500 is 234. And then 80 pounds just gets brought down the equation. Once we are simplified, in the calculator, you should have 864 divided by 520, and leave that really long decimal in the calculator. Don't round it at all. And then with it in the calculator, multiply times 234 times 80 and that will give us a total weight of this paper as 31,104 pounds and it happened to come out to an even number but that is very atypical it usually will not be a whole number let's do another problem together how much does 82,500 sheets of 17 and a half by 22 and a half 70 pound opaque text weigh Take a minute to find the answer to these four questions. When you're done, push play on the video and then we'll go through the answer together. If you're feeling adventurous, try to calculate the entire weight of the paper before pressing play and see if you get the answer correct. So the answer to the four questions are how many sheets of paper do you need? In this example, it's 82,500 sheets. What is the size of the paper? 17 and a half by 22. What is the basic size of paper? You need to go back to that chart and find opaque text. And the basic size is 25 by 38. And the basis weight is 70 pounds. Now that we know that, we can plug it into our formula. The first column, our paper size is 17 and a half by 22 and a half. 17 and a half times 22 and a half is 393.75 inches squared. 25 times 38 is 950. 393.75 divided by 950 comes out to 4.4144 and a bunch of decimals. Leave that in your calculator. The second column, the number of sheets, we are purchasing 82,500 sheets of paper. When you divide that by 500, it comes out to 165 even. And the basis weight is 70, so we'll just keep bringing 70 down. The final version of this problem will be point. 41447368421, leave that in the calculator, and then multiply that times 165 and times 70. The total weight of this paper, so 82,000 sheets of 17 and a half by 22 and a half, uh, 70 pound opaque text paper, weighs 4,787.1710526 pounds. We're gonna round that to two decimal places, so in this case, it comes out to 4,787.17 pounds. Try this third example all on your own. See if you can calculate the entire weight of the paper without my help. Pause the video, and when you're ready to see the answer, push play, and we'll go through the answer together. Okay, the answer to the four questions are we are purchasing 62,250 sheets of paper. That paper is 23 inches by 35 inches. It is writing paper, so the basic size is 17 inches by 22 inches, and the basis weight of the paper is 24 pounds. If you got all four of them correct, keep watching and we'll go through the answer together. If you got any of those wrong, pause the video and try to calculate the weight of paper again with the correct values, and then move forward. 
Now we can plug the information into our formula. The first column is the, our paper size, which is 23 by 35, divided by the basic size, which is 17 by 22. This is the first example where the size of paper we are purchasing is larger than the basic size, and that's okay because we can purchase tons of different sizes of paper. 23 times 35 is 805 inches squared, and 17 times 22 is 374. 805 divided by 374 is 2.1524064171. Leave that in the calculator. Column 2. How many sheets of paper do we have? We have 62,250 sheets of paper divided by 500. That comes out to 124.5. And then we are purchasing 24 pound paper, uh, writing paper. So we'll just add that to the third column. The final math problem we have is 2.15 and a bunch of decimals. Leave that in your calculator, multiply it times 124.5 and then times 24. And the total weight of the paper is 6,431.39037433 pounds. That rounds to 6,431.39 pounds of paper. We're going to take this one step further. When you are calculating the weight of paper, you will not always be given the number of sheets that you need. You may have to calculate how many sheets you need before you can calculate how much they weigh. The formula that we use to calculate how many sheets needed or how many PSS, press sheets needed, is the quantity of whatever items you are producing divided by the number out per press sheet. We'll practice calculating PSS needed and the weight of those PSS on the next few slides, but it should be noted that you may also need to calculate the number out before you can calculate the number of sheets needed. If you would like to review the number out option one versus option two formula, you can always go back and review the packaging and shipping lesson and the calculating ink coverage lesson. For now, we are only gonna practice calculating number of sheets needed using the formula on this slide. So let's try an example together. How much will the paper weigh for the following job? We are printing 500,000 eight and a half by 11 inch flyers that will print four out on 19 by 25 inch 80 pound opaque text. Before we can calculate how much the paper weighs, we need to figure out how many sheets of paper we need. And in this example, the quantity or the items we're producing are 500,000 flyers. And the problem tells us we're printing it four out. So we don't even have to calculate that. We know it's printing four out. So when we divide 500,000 flyers by four out per press sheet, we can calculate that we need 125,000 press sheets. Now that we know how many press sheets we need, we can calculate the weight of the paper. So I would like you to try to calculate the weight of this paper. First answer the four questions on the slide and then try to calculate the overall weight of the paper. When you're ready, push play and we will go through the answer together. So the answer, based on the, the problem we were given, how many sheets of paper do we need? It's not 500,000. We've calculated that to be 125,000 sheets. But everything else we can get from the problem we were given. We are purchasing 19 by 25 inch sheets of paper because that's what our problem tells us. We are making eight and a half by 11 inch flyers, but we are printing on 19 by 25 inch sheets of paper. We are purchasing 80 pound opaque text, so we can use that to figure out that the basic size of our paper is 25 by 38 inches. And we are also purchasing 80 pound um, basis weight paper. Now that we know that, we can go on to calculate the weight of the paper. If for some reason, any of your answers to these four problems was wrong, press pause and calculate the weight of the paper again. When you're ready, push play and we'll calculate the weight of the paper together. We can take our paper weights formula and plug in our values. Our paper size is 19 by 25. We'll divide that by the basic size of 25 by 38. 19 times 25 comes out to 475 and 25 times 38 is 950. When you divide 475 by 950, it comes out to one half or 0.5. We are purchasing 125,000 sheets. We'll divide that by 500 and that comes out to 250. And uh, there's a typo here that I'll have to fix. Um, 
erase that. I'm not sure why it says 124, but it is 250. And the basis weight of the paper is 80 pounds. So we can bring 80 pounds down. So our final formula should be 0. 0.5 times 250 times 80. And that gives us a total weight of paper of 10,000 pounds for this printing job. Let's do one more example together. See if you can calculate how many sheets of paper are needed, the answer to those four base prob uh, questions, and then the total weight of paper for this problem. How much will the paper weigh for the following printing job? We are printing 188,750 8 inch by 3 inch bookmarks. They will print 18 out on 17 inch by 22 inch 100 pound gloss coated cover. Take a minute to calculate the weight of this paper, and when you're ready, push play, and we'll go through the answers together. So first, we need to figure out how many sheets of paper we need. So we are printing 188,750 bookmarks, 18 out. When we divide that, we get 10,486.111 sheets of paper needed. We can't print part of a sheet of paper, so we will always round this value up to the next whole sheet of paper. So we need to purchase 10,487 press size sheets. The answer to our four base questions are, our paper is 10,487 sheets and it's 17 inches by 22 inches. The basic size of paper for cover paper is 20 inch by 26 inches and the basis weight is 100 pounds. <coughs> Excuse me. We can plug that information into our formula. So we're purchasing 17 by 22 inch sheets of paper. The basic size is 20 by 26. 17 times 22 is 374. 20 times 26 is 520. When you divide 374 by 520, it comes out to 0.71923076923, this long decimal. Again, just leave that in the calculator. We are purchasing 10,487 sheets of paper. When we divide that by 500, it comes out to 20.974. And then the basis weight of our paper is 100. So when we bring that all down and we simplify the math problem, we get this really long decimal, 0.719 and change, leave that in the calculator, and then multiply that times 20.974 times 100. And that gives us 1,508.5146.1538 pounds of paper. That's a really long decimal, so we'll just round that to two decimals, and it should be 1,508.51 pounds. And I have another typo here, that should be a comma. I will fix both of those when I'm done recording. In this lesson, we defined what basic size is, and we identified basic paper sizes used for the types of paper we'll use in this class. We also define what the basis weight is and practice identifying or figuring out what the basis weight is for example papers. We then used the information that we have about basic size and basis weight to understand how the weight of paper is calculated. Once we understood how paper was calculated, we practiced calculating the basic, uh, the weight of paper using its basic size and basis weight. And then we did a little bit extra by practicing calculating the number of sheets needed before we ultimately calculated the weight of the paper needed based on those client specifications.